Well, talk to me about that artist producer relationship between Simon, uh, Simone on this third record. Like you guys have worked with him before. So like how different was it this time around? This time it was different because we'd already worked on him with a, our second album, Cleopatra. So he later told us after we sent him all the demos that he was kind of not worried, but he was like, man, I just got a huge batch from me and Wes. Right. And he didn't hear, you know, one second of any of these songs. And then he sent uh, like a group text to me and Wes, just kind of like a lot of curses and a lot of exclamation points being like, <laughs> you know, you guys did it again. Uh, he was so excited to work on the album. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward a few months later, we worked on this album it was probably the most fun I've ever had in a studio. I've watched a lot of rock docs, like the Eagles documentary and all these other documentaries. And it's kind of like doing this album with Wes and Simon, this other guy, David Barron. It was kind of like what I imagined growing up it would be like to be in a band doing these like you know full length LPs right. and it was an unforgettable experience with these guys so it's great and now that like he's comfortable with you guys and vice versa like how did he kind of challenge you guys on this record because I feel like the fact that you guys made this record with chapters I feel like that makes it even harder to kind of like paint that story so how did he how did he kind of make you guys like step out of your comfort zone I think Simon uh, he goes by Simone or Simon I think <laughs> I'm not really sure Nobody what he knows. prefers. Uh, it's, I, I like that about him. Um, but he, one of the things he really embraced about the sound of this album was the back half of it. It's, Salt in the Sea was one of the first songs we sent him, and Jimmy Sparks and My Cell were these songs that kind of emerged and had a home based on that song being on the album. So I think a lot of it in his producer role was encouraging us to to nur you know, nurture that side of the album and, and embrace that. And, and it's now live, it's some of our favorite moments. And I think we've been really surprised at fans' openness to it. You know, I think we thought it would take like an uphill battle to convince people to come with you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just to get with it, I guess. And it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. To, if we believe in it, it, ten it tends to, you know, filter out to the people. Right. Yeah. Now, you know, because it was kind of placed in chapters and it was more of a real story that you guys were kind of talking about, like, did the writing process change for you guys? Like, was it harder for you guys to put that to paper? Like, knowing that, you know, these feelings are really coming out. Well, it was, uh, it was kind of a, it was kind of a reverse engineered thing. If So we made the album first and then the, the chapter idea came after and it was kind of developed after we already had these songs and it was almost like imagining uh, developing a film in a dark room where Jimmy Sparks and then Gloria Sparks and then this other character Junior kind of emerged out of the ether of what was already the album and um, it was really challenging but we didn't do it all together so it wasn't I think it would have been impossible to make like a concept record from from the first note as you were writing and I think it was more like afterwards we felt like this was a really beautiful way to present it visually. What song on this record challenged you guys? Was there a specific one? I think Jimmy Sparks Jimmy, for sure. Easy. Um, Jimmy Sparks, yeah. yeah. Gloria and Jimmy, I think, were the biggest ones, but we didn't really, we didn't really know if it was going to make the album because it didn't really have a chorus and it still doesn't, you know. And uh, we're just not used to writing a song that that doesn't have that structure that we're familiar with. But uh, again, I think bringing it back to Simon because that's how this started. I think he was really integral in saying, well, it doesn't have to have that to be a a great song and we would listen to other ones that you know we really loved and and it would kind of restore our faith that it doesn't have to be it can be unfamiliar and still be great